Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. If you're diving into this game development with Unreal Engine 5, you're in the right place. Today, we're delving into an exciting topic, which is the AI perception in Ascent Combat Framework. So for this video, we're gonna be going over AI and pretty much setting their attack range, how they attack, warp stuff, and pretty much just getting, making sure your enemies will attack you in the right place. And if you're scaling your enemies or have some big, big bosses or have jump attacks and so on, then this will be really important for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this tutorial, I have this goblin champ blueprint that I set up and it's a pretty big goblin looking character. And it is this asset by Dima 3D Artist or Dima 3D Artist. Uh, it is a really high quality asset and I absolutely love the animations with it. It does give it a very fast paced slash stylized feel to it while still being really high quality. So let me show you an example. So when I hit play, you'll see that because of that distance range, he'll jump attack right to where my character is and he has some good hit. He has some good hit reactions. He can attack me with these double axes that he's holding on to and he has a really cool trail effect that comes with him as well. So in my Goblin Champion blueprint and you select the main mesh or the main component, I'm just going to, in the details, I'm going to search for AI and I'm going to scroll all the way down and look for this thing that says AI controller class. And when I go to it, it goes to my ACF folder in the full sample and you'll see that I just made a copy of this ACF full AI controller BP. And now when we double click this, make sure you're in the full blueprint editor, not the one that just shows the details in the full screen because it will only show the stuff from here. And we actually need to go down to the ACF combat behavior BP, which is what we'll be studying in today's video. So over here is pretty much where you can set your attack distance, when enemies attack you, how they're going to attack you, pretty much their behavior itself. So let's start off with the first thing they're going to be doing is they need a weapon, right? So once your character equips a weapon, then it's going to be able to equip a melee or range. And you can set this up in the actions component or in the action set like so. So over here, I have a actions.equip.melee, which matches this AI controller BP that says actions.equip.melee. So it'll look for one of these two. And you can set these two really whatever you want. And you can look for some sort of initiation trigger. So this is the action that's gonna play when the combat starts. So you can have it have some taunt, or for example, like when it, if you're going over a skeleton and it spawns in and it's gonna play some sort of animation where all the skeletons come together, for example, or if my character comes from the ground and so on, you can really do whatever action you want. As long as it's in your action set and you have a specific tag to it, that's gonna reference it right here. And the allowed behavior for this one, I set it to melee, you can do melee or range. And now you can set its combat states configuration, which is gonna have ACF melee or these combat state of melee attacks. So regular melee attacks. So let me set this to something like 50. So if I set this to 50, then he's going to be really, really close up to me before he starts attacking. And you'll see that he's basically going to be right on me before he starts attacking. And that might not be the best thing you want for your players. But if I do something like 400, then you'll see that he is going to kind of space out and it is a little far. But if you want to fix that and have him give him more range, what you could do is in your action set, in your attack itself. So we'll open this up. I can enable warp. And just remember that you can't have play random montage section on if you are gonna use warp. And I'm gonna do a max warp distance will be of 1000, just so he can zoom right to me when he actually attacks. So let me show you this example. So he has a pretty large range and when he attacks me, it's gonna basically scooch him up right to me, kind of like that. And he's warping pretty quick, which is a, a little annoying and maybe not friendly for the player but it is a, a good example to show, but let me do something a little less. So let's do, um, for the warp info, I'm gonna have the warp start time at zero and the warp end time. So basically this is gonna say how many, how, how long it'll take for him to actually face me. So there's something like 1.5 seconds and rotation time will be one as well. So now he'll take a little bit more time zooming towards me, kind of like that. So you can see he's slowly warping towards me now. And now let's go over what happens if we set his distance to be like, let's do, let's do 700, something kind of far. Let me full screen this too. Oh, let me make sure I compile the other thing and I will full screen. So now he's probably going to start with, oh, so you'll see that he's scooching over during his attacks to cover more space. And it's going to require my player to probably dodge roll like so to dodge his attacks and so on. And I'm just going to try just playing with, with these settings so you guys can see that how much it's really going to affect my character. So I'll change the warp to something like, let's just do um, 2000. 
Warp angle will be 360 because we want him to come no matter like what direction we're facing him. Magnetism can be set as one. And I'll do a minimum of warp distance to like 500, just so we can see how far it's gonna force to push him. So now watch this. So now when he attacks, he's gonna scooch to me even a little further than before. And he's basically gonna be attacking where my character last was. So let me undo those. And you'll see that this combat state is set to melee attacks where you can add an index of whatever you want according to your AI behavior chart. So this index is the study target section. There's also chase target. And if you have a ranged enemy, then you would set your range attacks to be probably a lot further than this. So I'll set this back up to 400 and then also go back to my actions component and enable that form random montage section just because I don't want them to perform the same attack every time. I kind of want to be randomized and I'll just default these to 600 and zero and hit compile and save. And one thing that you will kind of find here is this jump attack. And in order to have a proper jump attack, so when he's around 1400, he'll always jump attack towards you. You can also change this to is above. So if he's always above, let's say 1200, if you get too far from him, he will jump attack towards you. And in the action set itself, I can go over to my actions.jump attack and will I also make sure to set my warp to be really high. So I don't need to play a random montage section because it's only one action in this montage, one type of jump attack. And I added a little effect here called a particle effect, which just plays this slam rock when he uh, hits the ground. So I can also play around with the location of this. So I think like one... 50 would be good just to play the particle effect. And if you want to add a particle effect where you attack, you can just right click and then under notify state, you can look for under notify, you can look for a play particle effect or play Niagara particle effect and so on. And that's just a little side tip off, not related to the video, but yeah. So back in my jump attack action in my action set, I have my warp set to 2000. And basically if I'm too far away, like over 2000 distance, then he probably won't be able to reach me, but he'll be able to close the gap with each jump attack. So let me show you an example here. So at the start, he's gonna be over 1200 and he's gonna jump right to my location and try to hit me. And you'll see that it's actually gonna be really hard for me to fight with this two-hander because I didn't up the HP as much when I should. But he is taking hit reactions, so that's totally fine. And let's go back into the AI controller just to go over some of the stuff. So you'll see that there is an actions AI.taunt, which will play usually um, it's under possible actions, so that's why sometimes you'll see the default ACF NPCs. They'll just kind of taunt randomly mid-fight. Uh, I don't give my my ACF characters an AI taunt. I think that taunt should probably be over here at the um, engaging action, if you do. But you can also modify your conditions by opening this up. There's already a blueprint in the sample set for you called ACF distance action condition. And there's a condition type of is nearly equal, is below, or is above. And you can set your distance from here. And it is a little hard to find because you have to go. A lot of people thought it would just be in the AI itself, but it's actually in the AI controller class. And you can make your own for your bosses and stuff, depending on what animations they're using, because you want to customize your characters as much as possible. And that pretty much covers our ACF melee attack distance, jump attack distance, uh, engaging actions, how to equip a melee action and get started with fighting and so on, and basically just combat behavior as a whole. And in other videos, we will go over threat component, targeting, commands manager, blackboard, and all of the rest. But yeah, today we're just going over the ACF combat behavior BP. Thanks for watching Code to Throw. Like, subscribe, comment below what you wanna see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.